Hi there, my name is Emily and I'm CTO at Evidently AI. At Evidently, we build an open source tool to analyze and monitor machine learning models. Today, I'm going to show you how you can create a dashboard using column mapping object to specify its structure. If you haven't installed Evidently yet, please visit our GitHub page and find all the instructions there. It's fairly simple. I already have Evidently installed, so we can start. First of all, we need to import a couple of libraries, which is Pandas and Scikit-learn. We needed to work with our data as with an interactive table, with help of Pandas, of course. And we are going to use Scikit-learn datasets to load toy datasets. We also will need a couple of things from the Evidently, which is dashboard, because we are going to build it. Dashboard tabs, data drift and numerical target drift. And we also are going to take a look at profile. This is why we are importing also profile and couple of profile sections. Again, data drift and numerical target drift. Now let's load our data. For doing this, we call function load Boston because we are going to play around with Boston dataset. Here we are. And let's create a pandas data frame on top of this data. For doing this, I put Boston data as in source data, and as column names, I'm going to use feature names there. And I also will add the target values to our data frame. I'm doing it by using Boston target. Here we are, and let's see how our data looks like. Let's call head command and analyze the structure of our table. So we can see that we have all the features presented there, and at last column we have the values of our target function, which is the price of the uh, house. So, okay, I promised that we will use the column mapping today, so let's do it. Column mapping is the basic Python dictionary, with help of which we are going to tell evidently how to parse our data correctly. In case you have very simple dataset structures, like the dataset where you have all numerical features uh, as a variable of numerical types, and your target function called target, your model's output called prediction, then you definitely do not need it. But if you have some specific things, like some categorical features encoded as numerical, as we have now, it makes sense to let evidently know about it explicitly. In this case, evidently we'll use the suitable statistical tests to analyze drift, uh, as we are going to do today, uh, for your columns. So let's create a dictionary. We can do it right there. And let's specify a couple of things. So we have our target um, function called target. Let's put it there. We have no predictions, so let's say that predictions is equal to known. Same for date time, because, well, we do not have any date time, but if you have it, it makes sense to add the name of the date time column, because in this case, evidently, we'll use it while doing some visualizations. It will be much better. And let's split our features into two parts, numerical and categorical. So here I have only two categorical features. I put it at the categorical features list, and all the rest features are numerical, so I put it into numerical features list. So that's my column mapping. Now we have all set up and we are ready to create a dashboard. First, let's create a dashboard object. We imported dashboard before, so we can just write dashboard and let's put a list of our tabs. So first will be data drift tab, second will be numerical target drift tab. And after doing this, we can just run calculate command to create our dashboard. So let's again split our dataset into two parts. First, 200 columns will be serving as the reference data and all the rest as the current. And here we put in our column mapping as a parameter to uh, calculate the dashboard. So let's run this cell. And now it's ready, we can show our dashboard right inside of Jupyter Notebook. Let's call command show and see what we have now. That's our interactive report. So first we have the part of data drift, where we have drifted 10 features out of 13. Very nice. We can usually compare distributions. We can open up a couple of rows and see how the distributions looks like. Wow, this is how our feature looks like. Let's see the distributions. And yes, they are pretty different. This is why actually data drift is detected. So we can analyze the rows for a couple more features, see how it looks like. Here we have the uh, chess 
variable which is categorical and you can see that evidently knows that it's categorical by the value of type it's cat which stands for categorical so we can open up uh, this block and see the data drift and the data distribution there okay let's move to the second block which is target drift and here we can see the distributions for our numerical target you can see the drift is detected, the p-value is pretty small, and here we have the distributions. So we can zoom in, analyze the tails, for example, and see what is happening there. We also have some additional information about the correlations between the features, numerical features, of course, and target, and we can see how target values looked. So all this information is pretty valuable when you analyze what is happening with your data, especially if you have data drift and target drift, and you need to figure, figure out why it's there. Just quickly remind you that you always can save this report as a separate file. For doing this, instead of command show, you should run command save and put the path to the file where you want to save your report. And for doing some integrations, you can create the same dashboard into JSON format. For doing this, instead of dashboard, use a profile. Let's try and see how it looks like. So instead of dashboard, we create profile object. And again, we need to specify the part of this profile. In this case, it's called sections. And we are going to create data drift profile section and numerical target drift profile section. So let's do it. And again, after creation of the object, we need to calculate it. So let's call calculate method and put our data and, of course, column mapping there. So we can just reuse the same data frame and the same column mapping, which is frankly convenient. So here we are. And let's call JSON command to see how our JSON profile looks like. Wow, you can see it's huge because we have a lot of features there. And for all features, we have a lot of information. We have feature name, feature type, information about distributions from reference and current data set, and of course, results of drift detection. And we have a part for our target uh, drift report there. It's the second because we start from the data drift. And yes, for target drift, we also have a lot of information about the distributions and results of target drift detection. So that's basically all I wanted to share with you today. This notebook is open sourced, available in our GitHub page, so you can just follow the link and see it. And come and check out, evidently. Thank you.